Hello everyone and welcome to my Realism Overall series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this series I'm going to be doing career mode with the Realism Overhaul set of mods which turn Kerbin into Earth and we have fair mirror space for realistic flight dynamics, real heat for realistic re-entry and also tack life support and remote tech and many other mods involved. I've done Realism Overhaul series since 0.24 and so I've done a number of these career mode series but uh, the mods constantly change, everything is very different each time, and so I expect completely fresh challenges. I also have other series with the Realism Overall set of mods, uh, including my Soul System Colonization series and the Exploring the Future series, but this is the only one in career mode. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna name this RP0 for Realistic Progression dash zero because that is the tech tree that we are using to be compatible with realism overhaul. I'm in career mode. I'm gonna pick my my flag if it's in here somewhere. There it is. Okay. And difficulty options. I'm gonna keep it to normal because uh, RP0 I think the building costs are balanced to normal but I'm going to uncheck reverting flights, quick loading, missing crews respawn, and no entry purchase required on research. We will start with 25,000 funds but, and otherwise everything's 100% and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so accept and start. Now the mods have been relatively recently updated so I'm gonna have to see whether everything is working out right and we will likely encounter some odd bugs here and there. That's just to be expected. Remote Tech has this nice little uh, dialogue now. I'll leave remote tech enabled as much as I sometimes wish it wasn't. Uh, consumption multiplier. Okay, well, everything looks fine. I don't know if there's supposed to be an RP0 realism overall configuration to this. I assume that that's already baked in. And we'll leave signal delay on for now. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it there. Okay, uh, attack life support, I'll do with enabled, and uh, it should be configured for realism overhaul as it is. Thank you. And now a preset, RP0 preset, save, and I'm gonna now spend my upgrade points. Um, okay, well, that didn't work right. <laughs> um, uh, I just tried to up the build points per second on the second rate and it doesn't look like it like that and I lost well maybe it happened and it's just not showing up but there's obviously a problem here uh, this is Kerbal Construction Time 1.3.3.7 very cute there uh, I believe so easy to remember so I'm gonna get this up to 0.5 but I also want my R&D to have a little bit of a boost now uh, let's let's go to point six here and there. Okay, so that will be my upgrade point distribution. So I don't know if we've really got two slots or whether I just lost an upgrade point accidentally. I guess we'll find out. Um, so yeah, let's go to the well. Let's get a contract. So first flight, obviously, and past the Karman line, which is a hundred kilometers. So get, getting. Well, close enough to getting into space. Space with uh, real solar system is actually 140 kilometers, so double uh, what you get on Kerbin. But uh, yeah, we'll pick that up. That's definitely something we'll do. I noticed that active contracts, the max is three, not two. Uh, so that's interesting. All these subtle changes we have to keep track of. Taking a look at the R&D building. Uh, previously, with RP0, I thought we had to pick the tech tree. So let me just take a look. Well, this sure looks like a RP0 tech tree. We've got improved stage combustion. Do we have a hydrolock somewhere in here? Early hydrolox engines. So this looks like the RP0 tech tree. Let's make sure things are really where they're supposed to be. Well, J2 is in hydrolox engines, uh, RL10, and the LR87 LH2 is in early hydrolox. Uh, nuclear power, I don't have too much going on there. There is the Nerva. Okay. So, yep, we've got things. We've got a lot of parts to start out with, but some of them are probably not very useful. Some of them do this sort of thing. All right, so, wait, it says purchase two parts. So two parts were, were still locked. Structural panel and, oh, a Soyuz fairing. 
Well, we'll leave those be for now, I think. Alright, let's go to the VAB and see what we can build. Okay, so here we are, and we've got two probe cores. We've got the guidance unit here, and the sounding rocket telemetry unit. The difference between the two is the guidance unit actually lets you control your vessel up to 20 tons. You can see there, avionics control the vessels up to 20 tons, and this one does not. So once we launch it, we'll have no control, basically. Um, yep. But this does have an integrated omni of 200 kilometers, so we'll be able to control it as long as the vessel is within 200 kilometers of the unit. That's good. Well, control it, not control it. Uh, what I mean is we can issue, like, the parachute command and uh, transmit uh, science command, for instance. But you see insufficient avionics. So, yeah. Um, let's say we're going to try and retrieve this. So I want a parachute on top and I want to go previous size previous size until oh well next size okay there we go so that that fits exactly I assume that's because it is set to that and we'll want to make sure pressure pre-deployment uh, 3.3 atmospheres and that's for the pre-deployment and deployment altitude I'm going to say uh, 1000 Hmm, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. We'll see. Alright, but uh, we'll uh, take this for now. Apply settings. Okay. We'll probably want to reapply settings for the whole rocket, since I want to bring the whole rocket back down. It'll be pretty cheap. Uh, so here we've got the tank, and we want to bring that down. We only have tank-type fuselage right now. So here we've got the Araby, which is a liquid fuel rocket engine. It's uh, really... hold on, let me get rid of that. Let's move that over. Okay, so the Araby has 218 vacuum ISP and just 7.6 kilonewtons of thrust. It's not throttleable, it has one ignition, and we won't be able to control it anyway. So... and then there's test flight. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, fill her up and we need fins and we need science. So, first of all, let's get the science on. Okay, and then in action groups, which we can use, I'm going to, well, for action group one, I'm going to have this do its analyzed telemetry. I'm going to have this do log temperature, and I'll have this do log pressure. Okay, and then in action group two, we are going to arm the parachute. Okay. Now, fins. I don't want this spinning too much, so I'm going to have uh, two fins that are tilted and two fins that are not. I don't know if that's going to work out right, but it'll be cheap. Nose are pretty darn big for this. We could probably make the body a little bit bigger, given our thrust-weight ratio there. Eh, not that much. But we should probably tuck those in. Okay, and then on these ones, I'm going to tilt them. just by that much, a tiny bit. Okay, uh, sea level thrust weight ratio is not fast. We could probably make sure that this is going straight up a little bit better if we went a little faster, but I'll leave it be for now. We'll try this one out. So this is a sounding rocket. We're just trying to uh, get some science from the atmosphere is all. And, uh, well, I guess I'll use the standard launch stability enhancer. Now I'm only going through the build process because this is an early rocket. We will, uh, I might do the build processes later on with the more complicated rockets beforehand and just show you the result and talk over the result in those cases. But since this is our first rocket, I decided to go with it and as is traditional, I'm going to just call it Alpha. Okay, let's take it out to the launch pad. Well, let's actually build it. It's going to take 11 days to build at that construction time. Okay, so let us click that and build. Now, it is possible that what I really should be doing is just testing the Araby engine a few times just to make sure we get some data points on it. But we'll see how test flight is working and whether it causes our rocket to fail. Anyway, warping to complete. 
I also have curve alarm clock and it also has a timer here. Okay, let's roll it out. That takes two hours. Okay, and we'll go at daylight. Okay, here we are. It is dawn. And thanks to Phineas Freak for helping me with the clouds, by the way. So we've got good clouds, even though RSS Visual Enhancements is not updated. I believe there are a number of different cloud fixes available. But anyway, uh, throttle up. SAS is not a thing here right now because we don't have a guidance unit of any kind. And we will see how this works. Well, here we go. Well, it looks like the engine lit. The, is test light doing its thing? Yes, it is. It says 622 seconds before a failure, and we're gathering data units on the WAC corporal, it calls it. Uh, we are starting to rotate. Um, we are tilted towards the south, which is good. That was sort of completely random. It, it could have gone bad. We could have tilted inland. So south is good. Now the key thing is if it spins too fast that'll cause a fuel feed problem and shut down the engine. We'll see if that happens here with just the two fins. Uh, it looks like having the two fins tilted like this certainly uh, worked. I mean it hasn't caused any problems. We're definitely solidly on the prograde vector. But here we have an engine failure and engine shutdown. It could have been because of the test light or it could have been because of the spinning. It didn't give me a message saying that it was because of the of the fuel feed problem so it might have just been test flight shutting it down. Okay well let's get the science. Okay so atmospheric pressure scan transmit. While that's going on I'm gonna arm the parachute and it seems to have pre-deployed already. Alright, uh, telemetry analysis, transmit. Uh, I forgot to reset the parachute after building the rocket. We should have had it set up for the rocket instead of just the uh, guidance unit. Gotta remember to do that. Okay, so that's done. And then the temperature scan. Okay, full parachute deployment. Wow, it's taking a little bit of time to deploy those parachutes, though. Mm, 8 meters per second? Yeah, we, we could do with some more powerful parachutes, too. The fins are keeping it pointed prograde, so the parachutes, even though they're fully deployed, aren't, uh, aren't writing this. It's a bit annoying. But uh, not unexpected. We've also got quite a lot of fuel left over, which is why I mean we'll pro we would have probably been going down at a much more safer rate if we didn't have so much fuel left over. If it was an empty tank. Okay, well let's see if it'll survive eight meters per second. We have a lot of funds to work with, but no point wasting them. Ooh, I'm guessing the answer is no. Well, no, wait, uh, it looks like fins, uh, that piece is gone, but this body is still here. Uh, it looks like the controller's gone, though, but the engine's fine. Alright, uh, can we recover anything? There's no recover option right now. This piece, apparently, we can recover. It's just a parachute. This piece? Well, let's recover this piece, that's more important. Okay, it didn't give me a recovery dialog. Also, I thought I got more science than that. More than 1.5. That's weird. Let me uh, take a quick look at the science archives. Um, it didn't register the telemetry analysis nor the temperature scan. It only got the atmospheric pressure scan. Well, that sucks. Why did it not get those two? Now, there's been a remote tech bug where science didn't actually get registered and uh, I don't know if it's still operant in 1.1.2 but so far looking a little bit iffy. Well we'll try again this time I will build a somewhat improved rocket okay so here's a two-stage rocket and the reason we want two stages is because now I've taken a look at this 
test flight reliability, it says for the WAC Corporal, which is the variant of the Airbnb we have right now, rated burn time is only 50 seconds, and uh, it really won't last beyond 80 seconds. So that's why test flight shut the engine down, and so we want this under 50 seconds. Let's do that, and let's see how much we can pump up this stage then. Now by this stage we don't have any fins, I'm hoping it, it'll just be spinning. The question is, will it be spinning so fast that it can't start? That's a question that we have to ask. And uh, yeah, anyway, we'll see how it works out. We still got the instruments. I've reset the parachute, hopefully the parachute will do a better job, but this time we can only recover this portion, not the first stage. Uh, I could try and put parachutes on the first stage, but let's not overdo it. We're already overburdening it with the parachute. If we take the parachute off, we get uh, about 140 meters per second more delta V. I suppose a nose cone would probably take as much anyway. Alright, so that's how it works. And I believe we can stage even though we don't have the avionics. So that is a thing. Let's build one of these. We'll call uh, actually we'll call it beta. So I did the Kerbal construction time thing, and here we are. There is a problem with the clouds blinking in and out, but I've had that with practically every version of uh, environmental visual enhancements these days. So we'll have to see about how that gets fixed. Anyway, throttle up, no SAS, and let's go engine lit. Actually I'm sort of surprised. I remember test flight not liking the engine starting and I had to do a lot of rocket launches before I actually got the engines to start at all. So this is a pleasant surprise. We are uh, heading uh, south. Yeah we're definitely heading south so that's good. Okay we're spinning okay here. Not a huge amount of spin. We would really like it to go more straight up, but okay. Stage. Ah, vapor and feed line shut down. Okay, well, looks like we're not going any higher this time. Alright, well, let's do the science. That one we've done. Well, it says we've done the pressure scan too. Telemetry analysis. Okay, transmit. Hopefully we'll actually get science this time, maybe? It doesn't really show my science here right now. Okay. And temperature scan. This time it's a smaller body that we've got left over. But we do have all of the fuel. Well, it says three points of science now. So we got the temperature scan, maybe? But still not the... Well, we got one of them, but not the other, basically. So we need to de-spin it before, and I had to do this in the previous RP0 series, we'll de-spin it and then ignite the engine. Also we'll start out with a higher TWR so that we can, we don't have to go so horizontal. 6.4 meters per second apparently is safe. Uh, it's still rolling around, so I can't recover it yet. Uh, oh, right, recover. Okay, five, oh, five science earned because recovery of a vessel that survived the flight. That's nice. Because it survived, and we got 46 funds back. Okay. Actually, let's take a look at the tech tree. So, supersonic flight is just one science. And then we've got early construction, which is 5 science. But I could do with some better engines. That's 10 science. I guess we'll save up for that. Then we'll have some, uh, some good engines. The Vanguard, even. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's focus on engines here. That's always an important thing. And also, I think the procedural parts tanks are good enough as it is. Um, I think they extend to 2 meters right now. Alright everyone, behold the Gamma. The Gamma has little separation motors on the second stage tilted the opposite direction as the fin in order to spin the opposite way, and, uh, stopping the initial spin so that the aerobe can light and then continuing on. These I have thrust limited down to 7% so they go for 15 seconds 
and uh, so that the the acceleration is not going to be too much. And here I've decided to put these separation motors because they actually have a higher ISP than the Araby and it also allows me to get the whole thing uh, to 50 seconds and 50 seconds so both stages are the same size. Uh, it gives us the extra boost necessary to do that. These I thrust limited to 2.5 percent and uh, that already gets us a 1.65 uh, sea level thrust weight ratio. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, this could go very wrong. Maybe the thrust limiting is being deceptive. I don't know. Uh, it could be that they're not really thrust limited and they're going to go their full speed, for instance. So that could be a thing. But, but, but it could work. Right now we're almost up to a one ton rocket too. Uh, I'm hoping that with the higher thrust weight ratio, it'll go straight up a little bit more instead of going horizontal so quickly. So we'll reach higher heights. Let's see. So we're going to take this and build it. All right, here we go. This could go well. It could go badly. And uh, I've got the volumetric clouds. I added those in. And maybe that's not a good idea because they do have that. There is that flicker going on. Okay, I'll try and ignore that for now. Throttle up. And launch. Yep. That's good. Now starting to spin. Uh, something blew up. Some, oh, those those don't have good reliability. Ah, test flight test flight's getting rid of those. They explode if you try and get them going for uh, so long. I see. So it looks like uh, they they fail after three seconds. So no extending them so they last longer than that. Well, okay, that's fair enough. But anyway, we got to a good start and we are now spinning our way. Good thing I made sure that this had a thrust weight ratio of more than one all on its own. But you have to test things. I mean, you can't take things for granted. Hmm, that doesn't look right either. Okay, some of these are changes I've made. Okay, step. Okay, it's slowing the roll down. And ignition. Oh, that did not work right. Oh, they, they, they explode. Okay. Well, maybe we should have those go at their full speed then. Well, it's running. The engine's running. We will reach higher heights, though, with a wobble. With quite a wobble. We're going to pretty good speeds, too. 20 kilometers now above a thousand meters per second. Well, let's see how the heating situation is, but can I do some science? Uh, tra uh, transmit that one. We haven't gotten that telemetry report before. Okay, engine's out. We used all the fuel, 1,400 meters per second. Still transmitting science. We don't need the other two. We'll need to send some different uh, science up now. That's great, let's see what we did. Uh, uncrewed speed record of 1,200, uncrewed altitude record of 30 kilometers. I don't know if we'll get above 40 kilometers. Okay, and the rest we've done before. All right. Yeah, I don't know about that flicker of the clouds. If I'm going to do any cinematics, I would like that to be fixed. I don't know. It might be because I added the volumetric clouds. Also, I added a mid-cloud layer that might cause a problem. There are all sorts of things that I've done that might cause problems. Anyway, uh, I'm going to arm the parachute. Hmm, I wonder if 0 0.3 atmospheres will be good for this because uh, we're going pretty fast, so obviously we're darting into the... Oh no, it looks fine. Darting into the ground, I was about to say. But yeah, parachutes deploy just fine at 0 0.3 atmospheres. Now we're below the cloud layer. And a nice scatterer ocean there. Okay, the parachutes have fully deployed, and that brings us to 4 meters per second. Very good. Those waves are excellent. Look at that. Those waves are brilliant, aren't they? Those are, That's great work right there. Okay, pop, bounce, lots of bounciness. Ooh, now there's a little bit of a problem going on here, but let's just zoom out. 
And zooming out, uh, let, let's let's ignore the problems. The waves are so good from uh, distance. Let's ignore any issues and recover. All right, point eight science earned. Darn it! So we still didn't get the telemetry data. Still didn't get the telemetry data, and not quite enough to unlock this. We are at eight point eight, but we need to send some goo up. Okay, so this is going to be the goo experiment mission. We'll call it Gamma 2. Sort of very similar. And I've decided to up the thrust limiting on those. So the thrust limiting definitely worked. And so now they've got 3 second burn time and uh, so do these. And so these are now thrust limited to 28. The net result is that our initial thrust weight ratio is 10. Uh, which could be bad. Uh, which could be all right, we'll see. It'll certainly get us off the ground in a hurry. And we'll see how that works out for us. So we'll start spinning pretty quickly. Uh, any, in any case, uh, we'll probably get the goo containers back and be able to do that science in the atmosphere. Still a one-ton vessel. So, build. And I'll see you on the launch pad. All right, this could be very interesting. Throttle up. And... Launch. That's them G-forces. Okay, uh, we are losing velocity now. Uh, oh, vapor in the feed lines. The Araby, because of the high TWR, couldn't sustain itself. All right. Uh, well, uh, set and ignition. All right. Well, at least this stage is working. Oh, but it flipped around. It flipped around. It couldn't maintain orientation. Shoot. Well, we'll see how high it goes, and then we'll do the... Well, let's do one goo container from here. Alright, uh, only 0.6... Well, let's uh, keep experiment and hope to... Uh, and let me dump that one. Alright, almost out of fuel. We got to 20 kilometers. There's nothing to sneeze, uh, sneeze at. Yeah, 24 kilometers. All right, and actually this time no flicker. Oh well, no, there is a little bit of flicker. All right, back down again. Oh, 40, look at that. We got all the way up to 42 kilometers. I think we got a new record, yeah. We broke 40 kilometers even though the first station worked. You know, it could go to space maybe if we could get it working right. Maybe we should just use these on the bottom instead of uh, instead of the bigger ones to give us a boost. Maybe we need like fins on this one too instead of using the the um, rockets to uh, undo the spin stabilization and do all that. Maybe fins, but fins you know are heavy. Test flight hasn't really created any random failures of the engines, has it? Not so far. Then again, they've been really short flights and uh, mean time before failure on that's more than 10 minutes. Each time we've only been using it for 50 seconds. So I suppose you could expect uh, one failure per like 13, 14 attempts on average that's a lot more generous than I remember anyway 2.6 science earned I didn't do the the other sample in the water darn it but that's enough let's go and get the the new engines research and I'll unlock them as necessary we'll have to watch it because the Vanguard cost 13,000 to unlock but I think this rocket can get to space so let's try and tweak it a little bit and see if that'll work out Alright, so here's Gamma 3, and in the interest of reducing the amount of acceleration on this stage so that the fuel feed continues properly, I've only put two of these separation motors, and they burn for three seconds initially, and then the, then the ARB takes over. We'll see if the ARB has enough thrust at that point, carrying the extra weight. We'll have to just see about that. I've also increased the tilt on these separation motors so that the 
spin is greater. Hopefully that'll help the stability on that. And in the interest of trying to get to space, I've removed the goo containers and put back the temperature scan and the barometer instead because they're lighter. Uh, overall, our mass is less than 0.8 tons now. But delta V wise, uh, still under 3,000 meters per second. This is gamma 3. Let's build and we will launch. Very well, here we are. And throttle up. And let's see how this goes. TWR at the end of the burn of the SRBs is a little bit low. But at least the engine is continuing and now it seems to be doing better. Pointing straight up, that's important. That's what we wanted out of the SRBs to get us Point it straight up instead of going horizontal, right? And that's looking excellent so far. Okay. And ignition. Alright, second stage is ignited, but ah stresses stresses on the vehicle ripped it apart. What does F3 say? Um tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Okay, maybe we should reduce the TWR on on those little guys. Maybe that'll help. It was going so well too. Okay, well, what can we do? Uh, I guess we could retrieve the guidance unit, but no, I, I'm gonna abandon this. Yeah. Okay, so to deal with the stress problem, I've reduced the tilt a little bit. I've reduced the amount of fuel in these separation motors a little bit and also reduce the thrust so it looks like we're at about four thrust weight ratio there which should be alright but uh, we can only see by testing so let's take it out to launch pad and try again okay here we are again and just in case it's not obvious I'm handling the Kerbal Construction Time stuff in the background so instead of recording all of that alright let's go So that works pretty well. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> oh, so much for that idea. Well, let's set and go. Uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Explosion. <laughs> it said explosion on it. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, so apparently, uh, well, test flight did decide to strike this time. Black Corporal failed explosion. Okay. Alright. Um, I really want to get to space. Maybe we'll try using the guidance unit and something heftier. So I've decided actually to try it again because maybe test flight will let me do it this time. We'll see. But I forgot to mention, of course, our technology does take time to unlock. So we're only 13% through early orbital rocketry. So we don't have the Vanguard and stuff like that. We should probably put some more points into, into research. We've got one available point, so let's up our research speed like that. And now it's only 227 days, but still, it's going to take a while. So we'll be stuck with the Arabies for, for a while yet. You can tell I'm thrilled by that prospect. Alright, so let us launch. Oh, it's a nighttime launch. I forgot about that. Mm hmm. Do I have ambient light adjustment or something like that? Uh, apparently not. Well, you'll get to see the engine flames, but I really need ambient light adjustment in here. Okay. Uh, that's probably the best way to go. Throttle up. Let's get that up, and here we go. Well, the engine is active for now. Oh, nice lights. We can use those as a frame. Problem is, this runs out, uh, and then we go sort of transonic, which is, uh, well, we don't even reach transonic. Ah, 
Yeah, it goes all wobbly. Uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Not exactly the vector I was hoping for. Actually, it might be going inland this time. Watch out, people. It's going pretty high, though. 40 kilometers. Mostly going up. 50 kilometers. Can we at least do the Carmen Line one? Not space space as far as real solar system is concerned, which is like I said 140 kilometers, but the contract was only for 100 kilometers. Oh darn, this thing locks away. 70... still going a thousand meters per second. Oop. Things have suddenly changed. Okay, that's a hundred. We went into a transition. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, so we should have fulfilled that. Uh, yeah, past the Carmen line. We've also got these other contracts that are hanging out. Uh, crew duration record. I don't know. Uh, crude altitude record. These these are the general ones. Crew count record of one crew in space though. 120. I don't think we'll pass 140. Uncrewed speed record of 1500 meters per second we need. Haven't gotten there yet. But we passed 120. Maybe we'll get past 140. If so, then we'll... Uh, let, let's check out the experiments. Okay, uh, upper atmosphere. Transmit data. I don't know how many of these we'll actually get, mind you. No, we're going back down. It'll just be upper atmosphere. Telemetry. Maybe there's some sort of randomness as far as which... Uh, which transmissions actually work, I don't know. Okay, and uh, atmospheric pressure scan transmit. So it didn't quite make it into space with the 140, but we fulfilled the contract. We'll be going pretty fast on the way down. I don't know if FAR might try and rip it apart, maybe. No, much stress on the vehicle. High G-forces. Uh also over a populated center. Sorry Florida, I do this to you a lot. You may expect more of this. That looks like a golf course. Well, no, there are houses there too. I'd really like my rockets to land in golf courses. Okay. There we go. Five meters per second. Very recoverable. Okay. Yep. Recover. Yep. Recover. Okay, well, we didn't get additional science for surviving that flight. That's amazing. We got 57 funds back. Um, it didn't list the transmitted science. We've got 9.7 science, though, so we got some. Let's see what we actually have gotten credit for in the science archives. Um, it looks like we've got... Atmospheric pressure scan from upper atmosphere and the grass over the grasslands. We didn't get over water. That's interesting. Uh, biological sample flying. Um, so yeah, obviously the mystery goo we need. Again, uh, recovery of vessel that survived a flight, obviously. Telemetry analysis from upper atmosphere we got. Uh, flying over earth grasslands we did not. Upper atmosphere temperature scan we got and flying we got. So that's good. The, the, that last flight I think we got everything from cons considering that was our only upper atmosphere one. We got all of those. Good. And if we wanted to aim for another science, how about this one? This gives us a Geiger counter and a micrometeorite detector. But we still need 0.3 more science for that. But yeah, that would be the next one to get. Also, the infamous Explorer 1 probe, which I always launch in a different way than it's supposed to be launched because I'm just like that. 
But anyway, uh, we're already unlocking early orbital rocketry. That'll be done in 227 days. Uh, in the next episode, we'll try to get into space uh, in a full-fledged way with a mystery goo container. And so we will be able to get much science from that. And then maybe by some point in the next episode, we'll have this unlocked and we'll start aiming for orbit. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.